people are feeling stuck in their jobs. Bosses are starting to worry. Okay, what's this story all about? Companies like McKinsey, Synchrony Financial, and Exact Sciences are implementing strategies such as increased mobility budgets, job swaps, and role expansions to combat feeling of being stuck and provide new experiences for employees. McKinsey's goal is to help staffers gain a more global understanding of the world by working in different cities or countries. Volunteer turnover within companies have decreased from 17% in 2022 to 12% in 2023, leading to fewer internal moves and promotions. This has resulted in lower regrettable turnover and fewer opportunities for career advancement, causing frustrations amongst employees. Companies like Allstate are prioritizing internal recruitment by setting up career-focused conversations and creating tools to, to see open projects within the company. This strategy aims to fill more roles internally with Allstate increasing its internal hires from 45% to 60%, showing that the company values employees' career progression. Tom. So company, look, this is the unintended consequence of work from home. And let me paint the picture for you. People working from home could not have those dozen conversations with your boss a week that were mentoring opportunities. Hey, look, I got this halfway done. What are your thoughts on that? Can you give me a few pointers to finish this up? All of that is off the table because you're just on a Zoom with your team to get something done. So you've turned yourself into a remote robot, not a member of a team. Now companies are coming back saying, hey, we want to develop the people inside and do internal hires to promote them. But some of these people we don't have good visibility to. Some of these people really haven't developed. And so companies right now, you know, we've seen a lot of layoffs this year, not as much as a year ago and two years ago, but layoffs are coming. And what companies want is the best of the best. And so they're talking about, we need to expose people to the fact that, hey, there's a promotion you could get. Why don't you mentor with me a little more and aim yourself for that promotion? You're a good quality people. Companies want to keep the best, yet the work from home and everything has allowed some of the good people who made the bad choice to stay working for home, didn't get the visibility to the boss. And so now this is unintended consequences coming home to roost. Adam. So, um, you know, the whole concept of people feeling stuck in their jobs. Do you know the average amount of jobs someone works in their lifetime? The answer is 12. So 12 different jobs. So the average job is about three to five years. So you're going to plan on working for 50 years. The name of the game is figuring out where you want to be long term. You know, there's a difference between having a job versus having a profession. That's the difference between being a jack of all trades versus being a specialist. You know, I've been at my company in the financial services world for 18 years. Most people don't st spend more than five years at a job. They go from job to job. They're moving for a better paycheck. They're better, a better opportunity. You know, we talk about the conversation about people want a work life balance. I want the perfect work-life balance. Well, Pat, you talk about this all the time. If you want success in your life, buddy, forget about a work-life balance. You better work. You know, the way that I operate is I like doing the Pareto principle, which is the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of my life I spend working, reading, strategizing, improving, and then 20%, yeah, I'd like to enjoy life a little bit. But if you want to have success in your life, if you want to find meaning in your life, you got to work your tail off. Last point, you know, they say, should you follow the passion or should you follow the money? Well, neither. Follow what your talent is, what you're good at. If you double down at that, uh, the money will come and you're also going to get passionate about it because you're good. Because they say that competence will turn to confidence. So this whole conversation about turnover and regrettable turnover and people feeling stuck. If you follow what you're good at, the rest will fall into place. Yeah. So, you know, for, for me, uh, uh, I think uh, a big part of this is the company's fault. OK, so, for example, uh, uh, parents, I can't get my kids to read. How do you make them read? I don't even understand and relate to what you mean. You can't get your kids to read. What do you mean you can't get your kids to read right now? If you saw my daughter come behind me and walk past over, I don't know if you saw that or not, is because she came. She's reading the book right now. and She gave me a report after she read the 20 pages. Why did she do that? None of the benefits of the day she gets until she reads. What are the benefits? Playing outside during the summer, going in in the pool. You get zero benefits 
unless if you read a book. Now, you may say that's extreme. That's your problem. That's not mine. That's my vision of what I want to do. But when I'm sitting there and I'm having conversations with my kids and I'm enjoying the conversations, when they're pulling up stories that I didn't even know about, did you know such and such person in 1850 did this? Did you know this person? I'm like, wow, that's pretty interesting. I didn't know that. How'd you learn that? Oh, I read it in this one book. You know, so opportunities expand for your children the more well-read they are with the material. Guess what, Mr. and Mrs. CEO? If you say, don't worry about it. Work from home. You don't have to read. You don't have to do this, babe. You don't have to do that. You're raising people that have limited in their opportunities. All of this rises and falls on leadership. I had a conversation the other day with one of our, uh, 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 not one of our, all our managers this week, Tom, you remember this conversation where we're going back and forth with philosophies on how to manage new people that come on board. And not, not just anybody that comes on board, like new executives and directors that come on board. And it was like, well, so so tell me, how are you managing this one employee? She said, well, listen, this is how I work. I expect you to come in and get the job done. You're already an executive. I expect you to come and do what you're doing. And then you just report to me how the update's going. That's what I expect people to do. I said, that's not the way you lead. Why, why isn't that the way to lead? I said, listen, one day I'm in uh, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Me and Tom are at this event. This is probably 10, 11 years ago, maybe even longer. And uh, Mark Cuban is one of the speakers. I asked Mark, Mark, what's the book that made the biggest impact in your life? He said, Atlas Shrugged. He's distanced himself a, a lot from that lately with his DEI stuff. But uh, he said, Atlas Shrugged. Then I said, Mark, all these companies you bought, you know, many executive CEOs have seven to 12 direct reports, some 15 direct reports, right? You have 56 companies. That means you have 56 direct reports of CEOs. How do you manage them? And he said something interesting. He says, I micromanage until I trust. Too often, we trust, then we micromanage. Let me give you the two sides of it. If you micromanage until you trust, what you're telling the new employee or the new executive is, listen, I trust your resume so solid, but I don't trust the fact that you fit our culture 100% yet. That's going to take a minute. So what did you do today? What project are you working on? How did a meeting go? Give me an update throughout the week. What happened over here? Let's have daily huddles. What happened with this part? Because I'm micromanaging you until all of a sudden I'm like, okay, how would you handle that situation? What do you think about what happened? What's your approach? Well, I'm going to let them work from home for a month. That's not our culture. So what if I don't have that conversation? I'm not micromanaging. He makes that decision. She makes that decision. Then I'm like, why did you do that? And it's like, well, you told me you trust me. So I made the decision of trust. Oh, I never said that. That's not what I meant. Friction, 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 fire layoff. Again, these are mistakes that we've all made, right? So then the other conversation was about, you know, when sometimes managers will hire people in their teams or when sometimes like in my insurance company, you know, you'll hire a new executive and a new executive will come and they get a team of 30 people that's on their team, right? And the executive will, will find a way to win these 30 people over and they'll use language like the following. Listen, I understand you. We're compliance. We're engineers. We're technology. Not everybody understands you. Pat's not engineer. Pat's not technology. Pat's not compliance. He doesn't understand you, but I do. And I have your back. And as long as this, they're leading you like a mother does, like just like mommy and these kids, and you're shielding them, right? And when you shield them, what happens? Opportunities are limited. So you're running a corporation. And you're like, Oh, don't worry. I understand the work from home principle. These executives don't get it. These rich millionaires and billionaires don't get it. We understand we have families. All these guys care about his money, but I care about your mental health. I care about your emotional health. Give me a flip and break. You just destroyed their career. You wasted four years of opportunity for them. And now you're sitting around saying what? Now you're sitting around and saying, well, we are feeling stuff because bosses are starting to worry. No shit you're worried. You're worried because of the policies you came up with. You don't have anything. Who told you to come up with those policies? Who told you that those were good ideas? Now you're paying a price for it. And these guys are sitting around saying, well, listen, I liked it. And by the way, even later on, sometimes when parents make a decision that kids like temporarily, when kids grow up, you know who they resent? The parents with low standards. Think about it. You know, sometimes you have a boss, you're like, man, this guy's so chill. I leave at 3.30. He doesn't say shit. I come in at 9.45. No one knows. He's like, he does one of these wink stuff. Don't worry about it. I got you. But you know what you just did? You just destroyed this guy's potential. 
You destroyed this guy's upside. Why would you do the wink, wink manager? Because you're so concerned about having people like you. Five years is gone. That's it. You lost five years. So if you got 40 years of running, one eighth of it is wasted because you had a lazy ass boss with low standards. And a lot of these companies are experiencing that. And then the future potential of somebody is wiped out <clears throat> thinking this was a good idea. Anyways, that's my thoughts when I think about stories like this, because I think it's the standard of the boss that's doing it. And they're hurting some of the people that maybe have a bigger vision and dream of what they want to do. So there's a movie coming out this summer. Everybody's looking forward to the Ronald Reagan movie played by Dennis Quaid. That movie comes out August 30th. But how would you like to do a private screening of the movie on August 2nd, four weeks before the movie comes out? And after you watch the movie, right afterwards, 30 minutes later, Dennis Quaid comes out and does a live podcast and you're sitting there watching him, the podcast, right next to me, we'll have a conversation with him. Big Hollywood name actor, all these movies he's been in, it's gonna be a very unique experience. So if you wanna be a part of it, all you gotta do is go to 5990live.com, there's three tiers of tickets, general tickets $100, Premier 250, VIP 500, the VIP people will not only be able to take a picture with Dennis afterwards, but you'll also go to the Cigar Lounge afterwards with me, I'll be there, a couple of our friends will be there. So if you wanna be a part of it, click on the link above below, or go to 5990live, get registered, We'll see you there on August 2nd, 5 p.m. in Fort Lauderdale. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.